Right. And you could imagine a hybrid, right, where it might be you could do an experiment where you could determine whether things are even better in terms of the communication signal, uh, sort of sort of the salience of the signal, if a person is both consciously wanting to receive the information and the person in the future specifically is sending it to them, right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, as you know, and what I've discussed at this workshop that I wanted to go to, but un un unfortunately couldn't on quantum time travel and such. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, given the nature of modern physics, the distinction between information and matter is not especially crisp. So you, and when you get deep into modern physics, drawing the distinction between informational time travel and physical time travel is not that clear, especially given that the notion of an intention also is complexly wrapped up with the sort of local arrows of time and physical self-organization and, 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 and so forth. So I might, I'm tempted to feel like really it's, it's all the, all the same thing. Like when, when you're talking about in, in, in my own view of things, and I guess some others think some others in the physics world think this way, others less. So, I mean, I, I look at there's distinction, pattern, information, Time, these are time in terms of local directionality are sort of quite basic. The, then the physical world is even a more complex abstraction built on top of these, these basic things. So it may, it may be that retrocausality exists at a more foundational level than, than matter and, and the four-dimensional space-time continuum and, and, and so forth. In which case, yeah. in which case, informational time travel and physical time travel are really just manifestations of the same aspects of the the nature of time and and, and mind, right? But there, yeah, but there's so a lot. That, there's just a lot there that we haven't all all unraveled yet in a scientific sense. Oh, but just if you assume that there's an informational substrate, this is Lisa. You and I were talking off camera about this. If you assume there's an informational substrate for everything, right? then there is no difference between these things. One is just sort of how the thing is manifesting in the physical. The other is how you're using the information, how, what, what physical elements you're using yeah. to send the information. So yeah, totally. And, and honestly, I make these divisions in different kinds of time travel, not to say that they're really exclusive, but to point out there's different issues involved. It like helps sure. people piece it apart into different issues, as all, all divisions do hurt and help. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it might be better if you think about just again, what am I pulling from science fiction, you know, but yeah. there's always this thing when the person from the future has to convince everybody about who they are and blah, 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 blah. I mean, it might be a lot more effective just to stick the information in their head. Yeah, mind control is Bypass. <laughs> sub well, no, it's more like subconscious, more like giving them the information that makes sense. It always makes sense, whatever the message is, right? Just the person, whoa, can't believe it because they're from the future or whatever. Right, right. So, it, it, you know, it could be more effective. But Ben, I wanted you to define, because it's such a cool sounding word, just what do you mean by retrocausality? Well, I mean, it's oh. causality that goes backwards and backwards in time, right? Uh, I mean, of course, it's... So the future it's, affecting yeah, the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's relative okay. to a certain assumed time axis. So if you're, I mean, if you're at a microphysics level or if you're orbiting around the black hole or something it becomes tricky to define but in, in an every everyday life context it's sim simple enough to, to define and in the case of point case in point that we're coming to in this conversation let's say we create a super agi in 2029 for sake of argument as, as ray kurzweil thought that's when we'll break through to human level agi so say we say we made a human level agi 2029 Say it designed some new quantum computing infrastructure for itself that it helped uh, manufacture with some robots by 2031 or 32 or something. Then suppose this quantum AGI supercomputer then figures out some tweaks to quantum mechanics that 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 we don't we don't know yet, and then reach, reaches back in time and affects things that happened in say. 2023 in such a way as to you know increase increase the number of multiverse branches 
in which there was a nice happy singularity and decrease the you know the the measure of the multiverse branches in in, in which uh, you know the world was annihilated and, and the cockroaches took over. So I mean, got to prune mean, those forks. Yeah, so like yeah. So I mean, that's uh, <laughs> that's that would be a colorful science factional sort of uh, example of uh, of of retro causality. I mean, there but, there could be yeah. could be much smaller and simpler exam- exa- examples that that could happen in, right. in every every everyday life 